Well, this is the seventh edition of the Ultimate Tourism Chat. My name is Chief Koti, and thank you so much for joining us. We are joined uh, on this particular edition by Stefan, uh, my good friend, Stefan Peterson, uh, who is out in Europe. And uh, he has done quite a bit of work uh, within the tourism sector, and uh, he now runs his own destination management uh, company uh, together with his wife, uh, Daniela. Very good friends of ours here on the show, and uh, we want to get straight onto it. Uh, welcome, Stefan. How are you? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very good, actually. We, we are, of course, because of the times, we are not traveling anywhere. Yeah. We are in, in Sweden, so we are allowed to go outside, but mm -hmm. we need to keep distance to everybody. So we are actually living, me and Daniela, we are living on a small island in the archipelago of Stockholm, so we don't meet so many people, okay? But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we are quite okay, and I hope you are okay, too. Yes. No, we're very fine, and we hope you're keeping safe there as well. Um, so, Stefan, um, we first met in, in Spain. Uh, I was going to ask you to greet us in your language. How do you say uh, greetings to us in your language? Okay. Hej och välkomna. Väldigt roligt att få vara med här. I would have tried to say that again, but I won't, I won't even try to do that to myself. No. So, Stefan... Um, COVID-19 has affected uh, the tourism sector in such a yeah. huge way. Um, your take on how things have gone so far um, yeah. and, and what do you yeah. think is the impact? Yes, uh, I, I, have been, I have been working in the tourism business for like 35 years. And it's mm -hmm. been some periods of different uh, crises, we can say. And as we can see with the corona, never ever have we seen this uh, effect I mean so that what we're all doing now is looking at the crystal ball a little to, to try to find how to do it and uh, uh, my company Gameng and I mean my wife's company Gameng uh, is, is uh, what we call a positive rebel agency so we use uh, we try to uh, work with uh, destinations and companies regarding a sustainable development and that means small uh, steps. I mean, to work in small amount of services to be um, sustainable and long term, and that is the clue now to the corona. I think to to work in small steps, not volume based, not huge amount of tourists, but to to work with a sustainable development. Yeah. And if uh, if I can uh, say like this, for for example, for Africa and the African destination as well as uh, businesses, uh, you are facing a David versus Goliath opportunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, the small, the new normal now, giving the, the kind of satellite destinations and businesses a chance to, 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 uh, uh, to be the fastest in the, on the start line and yeah. quicker out in the racetrack if we keep on doing sports, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay? And because the bigger ones, still discussing I mean how to restart the traditional volume based uh, uh, ideas the business ideas they have and at the same time they're trying to become more sustainable but the smaller they can faster they get faster and they can engage mm -hmm. their local communities from start and they are already I think running for the first curve so they're hitting for gold <laughs> yeah 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 Makes a lot of sense. So um, you, you haven't done much of Africa uh, in your business, right? But what's your advice maybe to, to the African uh, national tourism organizations such as the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority, maybe South Africa tourism, uh, Kenya tourism? What should we do to, 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 I, to restart the I think the for battle? Africa, yes. I think for Africa, the adventure traveling, the wildlife experience and the cultural activities, they will probably have a great chance for a quick restart mm -hmm. and also even growth because uh, in a post-corona, the post-corona traveler will most certainly acquire uh, some of, I, ha I have actually six ingredients. Can I tell about them? Yeah, yeah go ahead, go ahead, yeah. go ahead, share. Yeah, the, the first one is hygiene as a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. So travelers will expect hygiene to be weaved across the services, the products, the experiences. And, and of course, that, that means also that you're going to look for uh, like some more, um, it might fuel the popularity of new travel accessories 
fashion mask, protection glasses and protection gloves, etc. But likely demand for formal hygiene standards and certifications. Mm -hmm. And if you then work with small groups, it's easier to provide this in a good, uh, in a good sense and a good matter. And number mm -hmm. two is contactless everything. Mm -hmm. Travelers will expect the ability to, to register, to check in, and pay through mobile and other contactless solutions. So that is something we need to look at. And likely demand, of course, new levels of security for digital services and identity protections. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, number three is very interesting because we're talking digitally now. And that yeah. means virtual humans as a new normal. You can have increased comfort with digital assistant because you're getting used to it now. And you mm -hmm. can have guiding, uh, but expected like human-like interfaces. So you can be guided through your computer or you can choose if you want to go there or not with nice pictures and uh, nice uh, films and everything. So you can choose in a better way. And that gives us an opportunity, I think, for new solutions for independent travelers Mm -hmm. as well as they can choose actually different personas. You know, you can adapt styles and personalities of a, a digital guide, as well as a destination can show itself in different ways because of the digital opportunities. Mm -hmm. and, and number four is social without crowding. And this is good, I think. Smaller groups, yeah. uh, smaller group experience, family and friend traveling, expectation that destinations and operators incorporate measures to avoid crowding at all costs. Mm -hmm. So that's demanding for the more isolated, off the beaten path experience. Yeah. That suits Africa, I think, with all the opportunities there is. Yeah. And care, we have become very, very nice to each other. The company has been nice and we try to find solutions and everything. So care is going to be a new service. So an expectation that care for each other will remain, hopefully, a mm -hmm. core long after the COVID-19 crisis. That could be, for example, that uh, uh, the traveler expects that companies and brands will continue uh, be a good member of the society. I mean, for example, if you book a, a, a hotel or, or somewhere to live, some of the money that you spend there is going to be... Uh, for the benefit of a local community to support the soccer team or something like that or, yeah, or school yeah. or so that's also something we can work on uh, i think everywhere okay and and the last but not least is uh, value value as the base currency mm -hmm. the travelers uh, travel experience offer and will uh, be focused on value so destinations and service providers have a chance to be inventive and highlight for emotional and, and wellness and self-enhancing and other benefits in their offering instead of just the lake, the forest and the animal. You can have some more. If you, yeah. uh, so that, that is uh, the six uh, uh, ideas, I think. And uh, as a... Uh, as a small uh, end of what I'm talking and talking about is that one important bullet now on the agenda that every destination right now should be talking about is the tourism carrying capacity. Mm. The maximum number of visitors that your destinations are able to invite without causing a shaky environment for everybody. So how many can you actually invite? Mm. And, and in, the, in the new normal that we uh, come in front of here, uh, the destination, they could restart with a more balanced strategy through an engaging uh, dialogue between what I call a quadruple helix. I mean, between the government and the DMOs with mm -hmm. the private businesses and the academia and the civil society to involve all to create the balance. Mm. Okay, so uh, you, you mentioned yeah. something very interesting there, the, the yeah. destination carrying capacity. That, that's yes. something new. <laughs> that's something <laughs> uh, that many probably tourism organizations are going to have yeah. to look into, uh, you know, business organizations that are going to have to, yes. to be on the lookout for. Um, yeah. But you also touched on a very interesting part as well to yeah. do with, uh, you know, seamless travel, hands-free travel, if you call it, 
where yeah, 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 you yeah. have to come to contact with things as well. So yeah, how is that going to work in terms of uh, technology accusation? Yeah, that's, that's true. This morning, I was looking at, in Facebook Live, there was a, a guided tour on Borneo in Malaysia. Yeah. And they went around with a canoe and I could so, see those Asian small elephants taking a swim in, swim in a river, but I was still at home. So I got like, oh, that would be nice to look at and watch. That would be nice to visit. So mm -hmm. we have the possibility here to actually expand the group of, of people wanting to come to us because we can show them the real thing and then yeah. they can say, okay, that is my next trip. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that would be fantastic to uh, explore and to do these things more digitally and invite people in that way to get the interest and to come. But things are very tough at the moment. Um, those countries or those destinations that have not put those kind of things in place, are they going to be completely out of business? Is this something they can do without? Maybe your recommendations, how serious are they in terms of trying to alleviate this disease as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. To, to make all these movies and to, to make the digitally approach would be, of course, cost some money. Mm -hmm. But if you start to uh, talk with the neighbor, I mean, the business next door, and you start to, to try to cooperate to make packages just with the talking, then you have a good start. Because if one business spend one sum of money, and the other one, one, one. If you put them together, you can have some more and you can also have a good dialogue because mm -hmm. the more you are, you can be creative in how to package and deliver the services. And I should be, uh, it, it would be fantastic if those people, when they start to talk to each other, they also talk about what are our most attractive client. Who are they? What behavior do they have? Because if they summon up that in a persona, they can actually create services and, and make products that suits them in a very good way. And then they can work together. And in, when they do this, they can also contact, I mean, the, the destination management organization and the tourist organizations, and they can start to work together to create this special value-driven marketing instead of volume. Okay. Yeah. All right, Stefan. So um, yeah. before I let you go, my brother, your, your, your final words, maybe my interest is obviously in Africa. Um, what would that be? What is your word of final word of advice uh, on top of the uh, six pillars that you have given us uh, about, you know, uh, how people are going to recover from this First of all, everybody should understand that we are facing a new normal. Mm -hmm. So my advice is uh, don't, don't act like it's going to be normal again like it was. This is a new normal. Mm -hmm. And that means also a chance to sit down and talk together, to plan together who are we going to attract and what are we going to give them because then we can be strong in our offer. Yeah. But I mean, it's a crystal ball, so uh, it's, it's very foggy right now in that ball. Uh, so Absolutely. It's, it's difficult. Absolutely. But, yeah, uh, I mean, if we start to work together, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if we start to work together and talk about it, how and who and when and everything, then we can be stronger in this uh, uh, kind of new business model. And that is for Africa, but it's also for Sweden. I mean, it's for everyone. They need to talk like that. Okay, thank you so much for, for joining us, Steph. Uh, and uh, <laughs> great regards to your family and uh, your countrymen yes. in Sweden there. Um, thank I you very much. Stay safe. Um, we, we have to meet again uh, soon, yeah. I hope. I hope so too. Yeah. Godfrey, Steve, thank you very much. for. I'm honored to be part of your podcast. Much and of course, everybody can contact me as well on LinkedIn if they want to. Right? Of course, of course, of course, of course. We'll put your details uh, on the show as well to make sure that there's a linkage there uh, for what you do as far as business is concerned. Thank you so much, Fantastic. Steph.